this is my great pleasure to be able to give a uh, uh, talk in this uh, rather influential or seminar series at Fudan University. And uh, I would like to express my great thanks to Professor uh, Joe Bo and Professor Yugan Ma for organ nicely organizing uh, my talk at this uh, seminar uh, as host. So, okay, I would like to uh, focus on, in this talk, I would like to focus on uh, the lambda hypernuclei and focusing, focus on a, a wide variety of structures and its structural changes appearing when we add the lambda particle to ordinary nuclei, right nuclei, and especially we demonstrate it in a uh, carbon-12 case. In the carbon-12, uh, we know that a uh, typical uh, multi-cluster state structure appears, uh, three alpha cluster states. So uh, the reason why we uh, use this, we, we perform uh, uh, this, this demonstration uh, in this carbon-12 is that uh, carbon-12 is a multi-cluster plus lambda system if I had a lambda particle. So that is the first example of, uh, of trying uh, uh, to study uh, the multi-cluster plus lambda system. Okay, first I have to, I have to explain briefly what is this, uh, what happens in carbon-12, especially highly excited states above the whole state here. So this is the JJ plus one line uh, and uh, of carbon-12 spectrum. This is uh, excitation energy, and this is the Hoyle state, famous Hoyle state, uh, located at 7.6 or 7.7 .7 MeV. And above this Hoyle state, there is uh, there had been known uh, that uh, broad zero plus state at 10.3 MeV. So uh, I have to explain a little bit uh, in detail about this history. This is interesting history. So there had been, uh, historically, there had been a discrepancy about the spin assignment between uh, theoreticians and experimentalists for this energy region. So experimentalists uh, observed the broad zero plus state at 10.3 MeV here. The width alpha decay width is around 2.7 MeV. But uh, it is it was missing. It had been missing in theoretically in theoretical calculations. All theoretical calculations, and instead of that, all theoretical calculations predict that that uh, there appears the two plus data around here. So uh, it had been uh, the uh, kind of the mysterious zero plus state problem. The originally this whole state was uh, had been a mysterious zero plus state, but in that sense, this is a new mysterious zero plus state because the uh, uh, theoretical calculation this was missing uh, zero plus state. But uh, after uh, just after revival uh, of carbon twelve at around uh, two thousand from two thousand. Uh, because of the appearance of the alpha corner edge state theoretical calculations. So uh, many people focus, focus, so focused on this energy region above the whole state. And experimentally, finally, uh, around uh, 18 years ago, uh, two plus data was observed suddenly in experiment. And after that, uh, many other experimenters also observed the two plus state here. So uh, in this sense, uh, we, it seems that uh, theoreticians defeated the experimentalists because uh, this is nothing but two plus state uh, according to theoretical predictions. But uh, one question still remains, that is a broad zero plus state of 10.3 MeV. So uh, certainly experimentally this was uh, existent, this zero plus state was existent. existent. Then uh, for, um, for many uh, theoretical calculations, uh, the zero plus state was missing, but uh, several calculations, AMD and FMD, as well as uh, Spring GCM calculations, predict that uh, zero plus state, third zero plus state, that is a little bit higher excitation energy, but third zero plus state, they found the third zero plus state that has a bent arm to linear chain configurations dominantly. So uh, this, this configuration is obtained also in the AMD and FMD as well as in the uh, Brink GCM calculations. So, uh, but energy uh, is a little bit higher than this 10.3 MeV. And then uh, in 2007, for the first time, uh, this uh, Kurokawa and Kato Hokkaido group uh, calculations give a, a consistent result with the experimental data uh, the, as in, 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 in terms of the energy position. And at the same time, they obtained the fourth zero plus state, which has, um, might have the linear chain like structure. So theoretically, uh, two zero plus state, uh, they predict 
two, they obtained the two zero plus state. That is completely consistent with experimental. No, no, no. There is, uh, yes, in some sense consistent with experimental data, but they obtained two zero plus state. Then, following these theoretical calculations, uh, experimentally, uh, around 10 years ago, uh, the Ito san at, at, uh, at, uh, at Tohoku University observed, uh, obtained, uh, experimentally obtained two bumps. So this, this large wheel state, the 10.3 MeV state, can be decomposed into two eigenstates like this, two bumps. And the row is, might be corresponding to the third zero plus state, which is predicted by theory. And also the higher one, this must be fourth zero plus state, and which may be have, having a, a linear chain like configuration as a dominant comp component. Okay, and then, uh, but still remaining questions, is that in interpretation of the third zero plus state, maybe fourth zero plus state may have a linear chain like configuration as a dominant co component, but uh, what is the third zero plus state? We don't know the structure of the third zero plus state. That may be related to the corner edge state, that is the whole state, but we don't know. And then uh, this the so called THS survey function appears. And this gives rather good uh, description, or rather good interpretation uh, for, for the third zero plus state. And uh, let me briefly explain the, uh, this uh, so-called THSR wave function. This is a microscopic approach composed of uh, 12 nucleons, 12 nucleons in this carbon 12 here. So uh, this one, so uh, this THSR wave function is very, very uh, uh, special wave function in, in, in from the point of view of the, uh, of the microscopic cluster models. Now it is familiar for 20 years usage. But this has a variational parameter, that is beta, beta, or uh, instead of that, uh, capital B can also be used. But anyway, this is a variational parameter, capital B or small b, beta, it's beta. And then this one, this uh, capital R is a center mass position, center mass position of the alpha particles. So we have three, we have three alpha particles, so three variables, uh, center mass motion, center mass position, center mass position. Then uh, this has a Gaussian form for center of, center of mass motion of alpha particles. And this one, this pi alpha, this is an internal wave function, internal part, intrinsic part of the alpha particle. And this internal part is fixed with having uh, the rest to the fourth configurations. And this small b, this corresponds to the width parameter of the internal alpha wave function. And uh, that can be fixed at 1.435 centimeter, for example. That is, uh, that is, a, that is uh, the size of the alpha particle in free space. Okay, then uh, this is a Gaussian form because uh, all uh, nucleons sitting in uh, the rest uh, orbit orbit. And this is the internal wave function. And then uh, this internal wave fun function doesn't have a center mass motion of uh, alpha particle, but the center mass motion of each alpha particle have this Gaussian form. And a total wave function of carbon 12 have this form, maybe just a product of the alpha particle wave function. In this case, three alpha particles product. And pictorially, uh, this is uh, written like this. So oh, this is internal wave function, three internal wave functions. And all alpha particles occupy an identical orbit, that is the Gaussian. The Gaussian is the zero S orbit of the parabola potential. And this is a parabola potential, which is parameterized by capital B, or a small beta, the beta. Anyway, this parameter, variational parameter, beta or capital B, is just corresponding to the size of the total nucleus, or a mean field, the size of the mean field potential, trapping potential of alpha particles. But microscopically, this is microscopic wave function. So because of this uh, anti-symmetrizer, anti all nucleons, 12 nucleons are anti-symmetrized here. Then, uh, okay, this wave function uh, mathematically has two limits. One is a shell model wave function where uh, capital B equals uh, small b. Instead of that, beta equals zero. In that case, uh, mathematically we can prove, easily prove that this wave function correspond, uh, is coincides with the SU3 irreducible, irreducible representation, that is shell model wave function. On the other hand, if keep this capital B is much, much larger than small b, then uh, this is nothing but a gas of alpha particle weakly interacting alpha part, three alpha particles like a gas uh, and uh, all alpha particles occupy an identical orbit. Okay, of course, uh, 
But this is a little bit long talk than uh, given in an ordinary workshop. So please don't hesitate to interrupt me if you have any questions during my talk, of course. Okay, and by using this uh, THSR web function, this is this gives very, very nice description for the whole state. It is well known now. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, the, this is the typical example in the comparison with experimental data. This is a form factor of an elastic electron scattering. And uh, if we put the op optical or optimal parameter value, if we assign some value to the parameter beta or uh, capital B, and then uh, we construct a uh, whole state wave function and uh, calculate this inelastic, uh, the form factor of inelastic electron scattering. Then that it is in curve, a red curve here. That is, this is exactly on the experimental data. So this means that our wave function for the whole state is very, very reliable, or which we produce completely nicely reproduce the experimental data of this one. And uh, concerning the other quantities, right? Uh, energy, for instance, uh, this uh, energy, experimental uh, binding energy measured from the threshold, uh, 203 kV, that is well uh, reproduced, uh, that reproduces, reproduced by our calculation, and also alpha decay wheels, that is also consistent with each other, and also monopole transition matrix elements, uh, experimental data, 5.4 fan meter square, uh, that is reproduced by our calculation, 6.4 k. So uh, we believe that uh, for the whole state, the THSR description is very, very good and best maybe up to now. And in comparison with this uh, ab initio calculations, for example, the Green's function Monte Carlo, oh, this is data from Uringa. And uh, this one, uh, okay, this is ground state. And uh, this one longer features longer tail is, uh, is a whole state density, diagonal density. And uh, this uh, dotted curve is dot dot is uh, from the green function Monte Carlo calculations from the, for the ground state and the whole state, but our calculations in red curve for the ground state and black uh, purple curve in uh, for the whole state. All these are rather good on uh, the, 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 the result of the green function Monte Carlo, especially for the ground state and for the whole state. Uh, we have a discrepancy up to from from four centimeter around four centimeter. Maybe this is from the in the Green's function Monte Carlo calculation. It is very difficult to span the full model space, the uh, dynamical coordinate space. So oh, that's why maybe uh, the results is not so much well converged, not yet converged so much. So uh, as a result, our our calculation, our THSR wave function gives a larger arrhythmic scale rate, which is about three point eight centimeter. On the other hand, Green's function Monte Carlo calculation gives just smaller value, 3.0 to 3.5 centimeter for root mean scale radius for the whole state. Okay, anyway, uh, our description of the whole state was very nice. We can prove it. Then uh, now, uh, several extended versions of THSR wave functions are used. And for instance, one extension is very uh, natural one. That is, uh, this capital will be a small beta, this beta, we decompose uh, this beta into each alpha particle. So in this case, uh, so this beta, we don't use uh, the same beta, but the uh, different beta we can use. Then uh, this means that this all alpha particles, not necessarily occupy the identical orbit, but also uh, occupy the different orbit. But uh, after the variational calculations, if the whole state, for instance, then we can uh, suddenly obtain uh, beta one equals beta two and beta three, because for the whole state, all alpha particles occupy an identical orbit. Then uh, by taking this uh, beta one, beta two, and beta three as variational parameters for generator coordinate and superpose many configurations of THSR of this type, then uh, I uh, diagonalize Hamiltonian. Then we get uh, finally the eigenstate of this uh, Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is based on the nucleon nucleon uh, interaction, and we include effectively uh, okay, uh, uh, effective two body interaction with coulomb force and so on. And uh, uh, practical calculations, we take an uh, actual symmetric uh, deformation beta x equals beta y and beta z. Okay, and this is the angular momentum projection operator. So this is deformed. Uh, so uh, 
after definition, we can uh, extract the correct uh, good angular momentum projection, uh, projected wave function. And then uh, after this projection, uh, we perform the GCM. So propose many configurations in the diagonal as Hamiltonian, and then we get uh, eigenstates. Okay, and then for carbon 12, uh, there are many, many uh, states, and this uh, is zero. This zero is corresponding to the uh, three alpha threshold. So this uh, whole state looks like the ground state of the alpha particle excitations. So, oh, and uh, these are new observed states and uh, we get some uh, uh, physical quantity uh, uh, in, which are in good agreement with experimental data for this SDK virus. Okay, anyway, uh, new observed states are consistently reproduced. And all excited states about the thresholds are governed by the cluster dynamics, three alpha cluster dynamics, and uh, rich alpha cluster dynamics built on this whole state, as if the whole state was a ground state of the cluster excitations. Okay, uh, this is a, a situation of the carbon 12. And uh, we focus, let me focus on the uh, third zero plus state and the fourth zero plus state of carbon 12 above the whole state. And this is a uh, 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 overall function, uh, so-called the reduced width wave function, reduced with amplitude uh, in the channel of beryllium 8 plus alpha in S wave. Yeah, this is a uh, blue curve uh, is for the ground state and the red curve is uh, for the whole state and this black dotted curve, this is a third zero plus state uh, in the channel of beryllium 8 plus alpha. And uh, okay, Victoria, as a pictorial representation, this corresponds to this, this configuration, this horizontal axis. This corresponds to the side, uh, the distance between alpha particle and the remaining uh, beryllium core. Okay, and uh, we can see the monopole transition between the second zero whole state and third zero plus state, which is very large, uh, 34.5 centimeters squared. And uh, this very large monopole transition strength means that uh, this third zero and second zero is intimately connected to each other. Okay. And uh, for instance, uh, the monopole transition from the ground state to the foil state is uh, 6.4. This is already too large, but uh, for this one, it's much, much larger than this one, this transition. Okay, and then we can count the nodes uh, from the ground state to the third zero plus state. For the ground state, we have um, two nodes. And for the whole state, the two nodal behavior, no, no disappears, but nodal oscillation remain. And maybe this has uh, three nodes, one node additionally. And for the third zero plus state, node is recovered and uh, three, one, two, three, four nodes appear. We have four nodes. So this means that uh, this is a higher nodal structure between alpha, beryllium eight plus alpha like this picture. And uh, one important point is that the reason why node disappears in the whole state is that it's due to the dissolution of the beryllium core. So uh, this uh, means, this is because uh, in uh, the, the appearance of the node is uh, corresponding to the core uh, where the remaining alpha particle feels, starts to feel. For instance, uh, for, the, for this situation, so alpha particle uh, come closer to beryllium core and then at around six centimeter for the third zero plus state, at six centimeter, the remaining third alpha particle starts to feel the effect of the anti-symmetrization coming from the core, the really core. So this nodal position, outermost nodal position corresponds to the existence of the core. Okay. Then in that sense, uh, for the whole state, uh, we can see that the node disappears. That means that the really core is dissolved. Then as a result, a three alpha particle condensate appears uh, realized like a gas, as a gas of three alpha particles. And uh, another, cal another calculation for the third zero plus state uh, calculated by uh, Bojo uh, and third zero plus state is considered to be the breathing mode of the whole state. This is also important uh, for this important point because uh, this, uh, the largeness of this monopole transition range is coming from the, 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 the excitation, monopole type excitation from the, from the whole state and one by one, alpha particles, three alpha particles can be excited to the third zero plus state. Then uh, this large monopole transition strength is coming, comes out. Okay, and for the fourth zero plus state, AMD and NFMD calculation predicts that this state is, 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 can be considered to be the linear chain-like state. And actually in my uh, TGSR answers uh, for the fourth zero plus state, 
Uh, this is an overall amplitude and uh, the, the horizontal axis is a beta x equal beta y and the vertical axis is a beta z. So uh, this one, so this diagonal line corresponds to the spherical phase, spherical shape. And this one is probably a deformed shape. So the obtained, we calculated the square overlap between this fossil plus state wave function and this single configuration of THSR answers. Then uh, this is a function, can be the function of, of, uh, of uh, beta x and beta y and beta z. So uh, if we get this large, large overlap uh, in some region, and then uh, we, can, we, can, we can see what kind of deformation is realized in this eigenstate. But we can see that here, the maximum overlap is around here, 50%. So 50% uh, component is coming from this configuration. This is this density, intrinsic density distribution. So 50, we can say that for the post zero plus state, the 50% component is from a linear chain uh, structure like this. Okay, then uh, we can add the lambda, uh, we, we, we prepared uh, to add in to add the lambda particle. And uh, first point is a whole state is a coherent gas of three alpha particles. And third zero plus state, that is a high order state of uh, beryllium plus alpha or the breathing mode of the whole from the whole, coming from the whole state, excited from the whole state. And both are strong, strongly connected by the monopole transition with the whole state. And fourth zero plus state is dominantly as a linear chain like configurations of three alpha particles. And what the next question is what happens when lambda particle is added? And of course, if we add the lambda particle and then many new thresholds appear below the three alpha threshold, that means that new species of classes are uh, 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 existent. And uh, okay, and uh, this is, okay, the first study of multi cluster plus lambda dynamics and uh, also three alpha plus lambda in carbon 12, that, that typical example because uh, uh, the three alpha, uh, the carbon twelve is a typical system of giving the multi cluster uh, structure states, three alpha particle structure state. And the other point is lambda particle doesn't disturb the core structure because uh, this is out of the anti symmetrization of nucleons. Okay, and uh, we all know that if we add the lambda particle, or uh, typically the core shrinks, that is the typical structural change uh, as we know. And actually, if we add the lambda particle to the beryllium A, this is density, intrinsic density of beryllium A, which has a root mean scale radius around 2.9 centimeter, calculated by THSR by Frank Ansatz. Then if you add the lambda particle, and then uh, in Z direction, this will shrink, shrink so much. And uh, finally, the root mean scale radius is around 2.3 centimeter. So, so much shrinkage effect can be, can be seen here. Okay, then, uh, Further natural extension is possible or from the THSR wave function when we add the lambda per one lambda particle. This is very easy because the lambda particle is out of the anti-symmetrization of uh, carbon-12 core. So uh, what, we want, what we have to do is to just add the lambda particle wave function here, this one, characterize this, uh, this uh, copper and mu A. And this is, uh, okay, this, this copper, this comes from the reduced mass, okay. And anyway, uh, we have this uh, lambda wave function and then we can construct the total uh, wave function, uh, basis wave function of the carbon 13 lambda. I'm sorry, this must be the carbon 13 lambda. And in the same way as carbon 12, uh, we uh, take this uh, beta parameter and the copper parameter. These parameters uh, can be taken as a generator coordinate uh, and uh, we can solve the GCM or Hilwiro equations by superposing many configurations after angular momentum projection. Then, then uh, we can get a uh, correct eigenvalue and eigenstates as a uh, quantum state. Okay, uh, we use this uh, lambda n interactions and uh, for the nuclear nuclear force, we use the same force as, as used in carbon 12. And uh, this is a spectrum of the, of the carbon 13 lambda and then in, uh, in comparison with this other spectrum of carbon 12 given by the THSR answers as well as in experiment here. And uh, for the moment, we have to summarize the structures of the THSR answers, uh, excited states of carbon 12, the oil state is three alpha gas and third zero plus state at beryllium A plus eight, higher order state and fourth zero plus state is a linear chain state, okay? Then uh, if you have the lambda particle, 
Yes, as we can see, the many uh, other thresholds appear. So it means a new species of clusters might appear. Yeah. And uh, actually, we obtained one-to-one uh, -one correspondence uh, between uh, this uh, carbon-12 case. Then uh, we also calculate the rhythmic scale radius uh, here in parentheses. And uh, this is the whole state, uh, rhythmic scale radius. And then the third zero parallel state has, gives the largest rhythmic scale, scale radius in carbon-12. And uh, we connected uh, the second zero plus state to this second zero in carbon-13 lambda, whose the rhythmic scale radius is 2.8 femtometer. But uh, this one, this fourth zero plus state is connected to third zero plus state in carbon-13 lambda. So I, I, I discuss the reason in, in the next slide. And anyway, the rhythmic scale radius is a 3.1 femtometer. And this fourth zero plus state uh, can be connected to the third zero plus state in carbon-12. And this rhythmic scale radius is 4.3 femtometer. And this state is very important, as we discuss later. And anyway, uh, it's, yes, uh, this, uh, this inverse assignment, uh, energetically inverse assignment, why this assignment is happening? is possible, uh, I will discuss it later. And then uh, in this case, it's uh, okay, uh, the fourth zero plus state, so oh, this gives smaller B lambda from the third zero of carbon 12 compared with the other two states. Okay, we will neglect the ground state for the moment. And a uh, smaller shrinkage effect, uh, this means a smaller sh shrinkage effect because uh, this uh, rhythmic scale radius, this four, 0.7 femtometer, it's changed to only 4.3 femtometer. The shrinkage effect is very small, rather than these other, these other states uh, from 3.7 to 2.8, uh, 4.2 to 3.1 uh, for the second zero and third zero plus states, respectively. And uh, yes, root means for the root means carry, this is very large. Yes, still very large. There is no shrinkage effect. And small or B lambda value rather than these other states. Okay, why these, uh, these, these things happen? Okay, and I calculate next uh, the S factor uh, in each channel, each uh, carbon plus uh, lambda channel and other uh, uh, possible channels I calculated. Uh, for instance, helium-5 lambda plus beryllium-8 and beryllium-9 lambda plus alpha channel and in each angular momentum is uh, also taken into account. And uh, yes, we discussed this uh, four zero plus states obtained for the carbon 13 lambda, first, second, third, and fourth. And uh, as I discussed uh, before in the previous slide, the ground state corresponds to the ground state and the second zero corresponds to the second zero. But third zero corresponds to this one, third zero. Fourth, third zero in carbon 12 corresponds to the fourth zero in carbon 12 and fourth zero of carbon 13 lambda corresponds to the fourth zero of carbon 12. Yes. Okay, and uh, let me uh, check these uh, channels uh, from one to four. This is all the carbon plus lambda channels, this one. And for the ground state, yes, this is, of course, this, uh, the, this first channel, channel one is dominant. This means that uh, this uh, ground state uh, is, uh, can be considered as having the structure that are a carbon to a ground state of carbon plus lambda. So uh, if you have the lambda part, particle straightly uh, add the lambda particle to the ground state of carbon 12. And then uh, this ground state of carbon 13 lambda is given for us. Okay, this is natural. And for the second zero plus state, this is also, okay, this uh, from one to four, the dominant channel is from channel two. Channel two is the whole state plus lambda. So uh, for the second zero of carbon 13 lambda, if you add the lambda particle uh, to the whole state of carbon 12, and then this uh, second zero plus state of carbon 13 lambda is given. Of course, the other channel of the beryllium eight plus lambda alpha channels uh, uh, enhance so much, but for limited, if we limit ourselves to this one to four channels, carbon plus lambda channels, we can say that uh, this state is coming from a uh, whole state plus lambda. And for the third zero plus state, uh, this one, channel four is dominant. This channel four is uh, post zero of carbon 12 plus lambda. That's why we can say that, uh, uh, this is coming from, not from the third zero, but from the fourth zero, which has a linear chain-like configuration. And for the fourth zero plus state of carbon 13 lambda, so uh, of course uh, we have the uh, channel components configuration uh, dominance from channel two, but, but also channel three is uh, very large. 
And then, then channel three is a carbon, a third zero plus state of carbon 12 plus lambda. So considering uh, this one, uh, this is from uh, fourth zero plus lambda. So we can say that this one is uh, largely third zero plus lambda or uh, as a mixture, second zero plus lambda. But anyway, these are related to the second zero so much. Okay, that's why we assign uh, this one is uh, this one and this one is this one. Okay, and the next uh, we can uh, discuss this uh, the the latter half of the channels, uh, beryllium eight plus helium five lambda or beryllium nine lambda plus alpha channels. And for example, that the for the whole state here, the channel six and the channel eight is domi a dominant. So uh, channel eight, uh, channel six and channel eight, channel six and channel eight are like this here. So beryllium eight plus helium five lambda or beryllium nine lambda plus alpha. But the dominant channel is this one. So uh, we can say that uh, in the coil state, the, if you have the lambda particle, the finally the beryllium nine lambda plus alpha structure is, 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 is realized. That is the second zero of carbon 13 lambda. And actually the very large uh, reduction uh, of the size from the uh, 3.7 to 2.8 femtometer for the root mean scale radius. And the B lambda uh, is about 8.5 MeV. That is rather similar to the uh, B lambda for the B, for the very lambda, which is 6.7 MeV, but a little bit larger uh, energy gain uh, we can see for this, this state, the second zero. That is because a lambda particle uh, doesn't only uh, couples to the beryllium, nine, beryllium eight, but also couples to helium four uh, to form the helium five lambda. So in some sense, lambda particle is orbiting all three alpha particles and compact object is realized for the second zero of carbon 13 lambda. And uh, next, uh, for the third zero plus state, the dominant channel is channel nine, the beryllium nine lambda plus alpha in D wave. So oh, this is uh, the, so the, this D wave components, the typical or channel of which has a linear chain like structure. So this is again, uh, consistent with uh, our picture that uh, third zero is coming from the fourth zero of uh, carbon 12, which has a linear chain like configurations. Okay, and then, then uh, B lambda is also around uh, 8.3, and that is a uh, similar value to this B lambda 8.5 for the second zero plus state. So in some sense, uh, alpha lambda particle is orbiting uh, around the linear chain of three alpha particles uh, rather democratically, we can say. But of course, uh, this channel is dominant. So beryllium and lambda plus alpha uh, correlation is very strong, still correlation is strong. Okay, and finally, uh, the fourth zero plus state. This is very important and interesting. And uh, because as uh, shrinkage effect is very small, and also B lambda is very small, half of these other states. That's why, the, okay, let me uh, discuss this one. The dominant channel is this one. So uh, channel six and channel 10. For instance, for the channel six, that's beryllium eight plus helium five lambda. And also channel 10, beryllium 9 lambda plus alpha, but beryllium 9 lambda is sitting in the second zero plus state. And we skip the detail of the second zero plus state of beryllium 9 lambda, but according to the calculation of THSR answers, we can say that this second zero beryllium 9 lambda uh, can be a resonant nature, has a resonant nature between alpha plus any five lambda. In this sense, uh, this is also heading five lambda plus alpha and alpha. So or beryllium 8, in channel six, beryllium is can be easily decomposed into two alpha particles. So uh, this dominance of uh, channel six and 10 are completely consistent with each other. All these configurations indicate that this state has alpha plus alpha plus heading five lambda configuration. And actually uh, B lambda 4.1 uh, MeV is similar value uh, to this 3.1 MeV that is uh, uh, B lambda for the heading five lambda. So lambda particle only couples to the heading four alpha particles only, not the beryllium eight core, not to the beryllium eight core. That's why uh, the B lambda this for this state is around four MeV, round which is similar uh, to the three point one MeV. Okay. Anyway, uh, okay. So oh, we can we can uh, up to now we can summarize uh, the structure of this obtained states. For the second zero plus state uh, and third zero plus state, lambda overlaps with uh, two alpha clusters to form beryllium nine lambda 
Uh, but for third zero plus state, there's a linear chain like configuration. And for fourth zero plus state, lambda particle overlaps with only one alpha cluster to form any five lambda plus alpha plus, I'm sorry, beryllium eight, I'm sorry, beryllium eight. And then uh, less binding and less shrinkage uh, comes out. And uh, also, uh, we can look at the thresholds, each threshold. This has uh, dominantly alpha plus second zero beryllium nine lambda, and this fourth zero plus is realized around here, the threshold, and also third zero, the dominant channel is this one. And actually, uh, this state exists around uh, this threshold, and also oh, this one, a little bit smaller, uh, lower. But anyway, uh, the threshold rule is still an important basis to understand cluster dynamics even in this hypernucleus. hypernucleus. Okay, and uh, especially for the fourth zero plus state, heading five lambda plus two alpha, two alpha cluster uh, structures. That's why uh, this we can say that this is a gas like state of alpha alpha plus heading five lambda. That is an uh, analog state to the whole state in carbon 12. Okay, and then uh, another important point is this state appears as a result of the orthogonality to the lower configurations. So, or the second zero plus state, if we have the lambda particle, the lambda particle couples to beryllium eight core plus alpha. Then, then uh, the fourth zero plus state, if we add the lambda particle uh, to the fourth zero plus state in carbon, uh, the third zero plus state in carbon 12, and then lambda particle cannot be a couple, cannot couple to beryllium eight core uh, because uh, this configuration is occupied. And then uh, lambda particle couples to the remaining alpha particle to form ferrin five lambda. And finally, the alpha, alpha plus ferrin five lambda configurations uh, is realized. That is a uh, kind of the gas of uh, three clusters. Okay, and actually, if we look at the reduced width amplitude, that is a kind of overlap amplitude with a certain channel. And uh, especially, let me focus on these two curves, red, uh, blue curves. That is for or the third zero plus state of carbon 12, which corresponds to the fourth zero plus state of carbon 13 lambda. And the channel is heading five lambda plus beryllium eight for fourth zero. And for the third zero, alpha plus beryllium eight channel is uh, it's wrong here. And uh, okay, for the third carbon 12, uh, as, uh, this was uh, shown before in the slides of the zero plus states of carbon 12, this uh, blue dotted curve. So oh, as again, we have the four nodes. And as I said before, this uh, outermost nodal position corresponds to the core of beryllium eight, uh, where, where, where alpha particle starts to fill, the remaining third alpha particle starts to fill. And on the other hand, uh, for all the carbon 13 lambda, for the fourth zero plus state, uh, noted by this uh, blue curve here, solid curve. And uh, again, this uh, nose disappears, we can see. This means that uh, in the fourth zero plus state, the nodal structure disappears. So core, very made core disappears and dissolves. And uh, again, ferrin five lambda plus two alpha gas, cluster gas is realized. This is clear evidence of this uh, three alpha cluster gas. Okay. And uh, fourth, third zero plus state, as I said, uh, this third zero plus state is coming from the fourth zero of carbon 12, which has a linear chain like configuration. And again, uh, we calculate the square overlap uh, for this third zero of carbon 13 lambda. And again, we get obtained a similar uh, overlap surface. So in a uh, pro strongly probably deformed region, we can get around 50%. So all this means that 50% of the component is of this uh, third zero plus state is coming from the linear general configuration like this here. And the intrinsic shape is uh, written like this, drawn like this. The rhythmic radius is 3.1 centimeter. And this is uh, intrinsic density of this 50% component in the embedded in the fourth zero plus state of carbon 12, which gives uh, 4.2 rhythmic radius centimeter. And uh, if you had a lambda particle, a rather sufficiently large uh, shrinkage effect can be given uh, from uh, actually the rhythmic radius is this one from to this to this one. And uh, from the intrinsic density, yes, in Z directions, the lambda particles shrink so much in Z directions, three alpha particles come closer together. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me summarize up to now the results. Uh, so second zero is a compact beryllium nine lambda plus alpha. And the third zero plus state, this is coming from the linear chain. And the uh, linear chain of the fourth zero in carbon 12 survives 
even we have the lambda particle in carbon 13 lambda. And fourth zero. So the second zero is no more gas like states of three alpha particles plus lambda. But instead of that, as analog states to the whole state, the fourth zero plus state, the two alpha plus heading five lambda gas is realized because of the anti-symmetrization, because of the orthogonalization to the lower states here. But finally, uh, very, very recently, another calculations appeared. This was practically done by Chan Wu and Ranjo. And uh, recently, very recently, we submitted it to PRC. And this is the OCM result. And uh, totally, we, this OCM, according to this OCM calculation, gives us consistent result, result with this uh, THSR answers. But uh, this one, nearly this third zero appears here. This intervenes between the second zero and third zero in THSR answers. Okay, that is very important and interesting point. Another zero plus state is given. And actually, uh, if we compare uh, the S factor between the THSR hyper THSR answers and three alpha plus lambda with CM, then uh, this is for all the uh, second zero plus state. We can get a consistent result, result between them for the second zero. And for the third zero, yes, we can uh, read a consistent result between them. And also uh, for the third zero plus state, or I'm sorry, fourth zero plus state, second, third, and fourth zero plus state, again, we can get a consistent re result with uh, both approaches, uh, hyper THSR and three alpha plus lambda OCM. But another one, so uh, this state intervenes between this and this in THSR answers. And this state, uh, this is S factor, and the dominant channel is from six, number six. Number six is this one, beryllium A, beryllium 9 lambda plus alpha. So if you look at this uh, re reduced width amplitude of this uh, third zero plus state calculated by uh, OCM, uh, let us focus on this uh, third zero uh, uh, in the channel of alpha plus beryllium A to gain, and uh, third zero uh, in the alpha plus beryllium 9 lambda. The last time, as I show, uh, this uh, alpha plus beryllium and lambda. So this doesn't have uh, any uh, core uh, for this state, but uh, for the for the fourth zero plus state. But for this new third zero plus state here, so uh, this uh, blue dotted curve here. This one again has a node, and outermost node is around uh, is around uh, six centimeter, and this black curve. Is corresponding to this is, is for the, the third zero in alpha plus beryllium eight. And rather slightly, we can see the shrinkage effect because this, uh, the, this amplitude is dragged into the inner region from this black curve that is for third zero of carbon 12. But uh, normal behavior don't, don't dis doesn't disappear. And it is existent here. So this means that in this uh, new uh, zero plus state obtained by three alpha plus lambda OCM, the, the, this core, beryllium nine lambda core, doesn't disappear. And also this has a higher order structure. So this means that uh, this is nothing but analogy, analogical, analog, analogous state uh, to, to the third zero plus state of carbon uh, 13, uh, carbon 12. And we can add the lambda particle as it is to this beryllium eight core, keeping the uh, relative motion between alpha and beryllium eight as a higher order configuration. Then uh, beryllium 9 lambda plus alpha of higher order structure is realized. Yeah. So although there are many varieties of uh, adding the lambda particle to the cluster states. So lambda particle can couple to the beryllium 8 core. And again, and also well, the lambda particle can couple to helium 4 alpha particle to form helium 5 lambda. And also uh, the, the very compact beryllium nine lambda plus alpha structure is realized instead of the whole state, whole state plus lambda uh, particle addition and linear chain as well. So there are many varieties of structures and structure changes. And uh, again, we can calculate this monopole transition. Uh, this is also interesting. So uh, yeah, the, as I said, that's in carbon 12, the second zero or the whole state and third zero plus it's very much strongly connected by the uh, strong monopole transition, uh, whose value is calculated uh, about as a uh, 48.5 centimeter, 48.5 centimeter square in OCM calculations. And uh, in this case, as I said, this three alphas can be excited by monopole. That's why this large value is given. 
And this is three times larger than the transition between the second zero and third zero of carbon-13 lambda. This is a new state. So, oh, alpha particle, uh, of course, this is very already strong, uh, large uh, strength of the monopole transition. But this is one third of this one, in the case of carbon-12. This is because in this case, the, the, this, uh, the whole state, second zero, also has a very limited lambda plus alpha without higher node, higher node. No more uh, node. And then uh, if we uh, excite uh, the second zero of carbon-13 lambda by monopole uh, operator, and then only one alpha particles can be, particle can be excited. So this, if this is excited, and then uh, this structure is not realized. So uh, only the relative motion between alpha and beryllium-9 lambda is uh, excited by monopole operator. Then uh, this one third of this one is realized here. This is everything is consistent. And this also indicates that uh, for the carbon-12, uh, these three alpha particles can be excited. And as a result, the breathing mode is realized for the third zero plus state excited from the whole state. OK, and finally, let me summarize uh, my talk. And uh, first, I discuss the carbon-12 situation, the whole state that is a coherent gas of three alphas and third zero is considered to be higher nodal structure state of beryllium eight plus alpha or breathing mode of the whole state. And both are strongly connected uh, uh, by the monopole transition between whole state and third zero. And fourth zero is a little bit different structure. That is the linear chain like structure of three alphas. And if you add the lambda particle to the whole state, then uh, the beryllium nine lambda plus alpha structure is given. That is very compact object. And linear chain state survives if, even if we have the lambda particle, and that appears as the third zero of carbon-13 lambda. But uh, the, if we add the lambda particle to third zero plus state of carbon-12, and then still it, give, it gives a dilute gas of two alpha plus helium hel plus hel five lambda structure. That can be, uh, that is nothing but the whole analog state. That is the gas of three alpha clusters, indicate, which indicate that the third zero is the family of the whole state, okay, analog. Then a uh, recent result by OCM, 3 alpha plus lambda OCM, uh, tells us that uh, first uh, it gives a consistent result with the hypothesis are answered up to now, but uh, exceptionally additional third zero plus state is appeared, is, is, is obtained in this approach. And uh, carbon, if we add the lambda particle to third zero plus state of carbon 12, we had another choice, another possibility. That gives uh, the alpha plus beryllium 9 lambda structure, but relative motion between alpha and beryllium 9 lambda has a higher node rather than this whole state plus uh, this beryllium 9 plus alpha in the second zero. Okay, uh, that's all my talk is. Uh, thanks to, for your attention and to my collaborators, uh, Zhou San and other many Chinese people, and Chiang Wu uh, from Ranzhou, uh, which practically performed the calculation of three alpha plus lambda was in. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, finding sound very nice talk. And uh, if you have a question, so uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask directly. Uh, oh, maybe I got in the chat, uh, why the core becomes more bound when lambda is added? Oh, any intuitive picture? Oh, that's nice. Uh, core becomes more bound, core. Ah, okay, okay. For instance, a simple way we can understand simply. Oh. The people believe that, oh, maybe it is better to come back to uh, the beritimate. And uh, normally, uh, the, okay, uh, the shrinkage effect is uh, very important for the cluster system. And uh, even if we add the ground state, for example, uh, even if you add the ground, add the lambda particle to the ground state of carbon-12, there is no shrinkage effect because the density of the ground state of carbon-12 is already saturated. But uh, for the cluster state, this root mean scale is 2.9 centimeter. This is rather a dilute system compared with the saturation density. So there's a room for, for, for the system to be shrinked by adding the lambda particle. That is one reason. Of course, uh, because of the lambda, uh, nuclear interaction is strong. Or lambda alpha interaction. And uh, lambda particle is out of the anti-symmetrization. 
So that、uh, just only the interaction, attractive potential is given.、Huh. And that is also true for the whole state and other cluster states. All states have、uh, far away from the saturation density. So there is a room、uh, to shrink so much if you have the lambda particle, because lambda plus alpha interaction is always attractive potential. Okay, Maybe, thank you.、Uh, oh, okay. Yes, actually, yes. This、uh, ground state, if you add lambda、uh, to the ground state, which is already saturated, saturation, then、uh, almost no shrinkage effect here. This is a r u t m i s k a radius. So, okay, so、uh, any questions?、Uh, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hi. Uh, Frankie, <laughs> nice to meet you.、Uh, oh. Has been long time to see you again. So, yeah, thank you so much for for very interesting、oh, talk. Uh, so, yeah, I, I very much interested about the way you construct the wave function、mm. uh, for this cluster structure. Uh,、mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, so you have, a, let's say, Two generic coordinates, right? Beta. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah.、Uh, are these betas um uh reflecting the the uh the relative position of uh so your alphas or 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 how how or what's the physical meaning of this beta? Oh, this xi for beta. Oh, this xi. Uh, xi. C is the dynamical coordinate between the center mass position of the carbon 12 and the lambda particle.、Uh -huh. This one, dynamical coordinate, yes. Okay, this is for the position of lambda, right? Yeah. And、um, so, for、uh, how about the position for the three alphas? Oh, three alpha.、Uh, okay,、uh, I omit the variable, but all these have、uh, capital R. It is.、Uh, maybe this is.、Uh, this is okay. This is good. This one. So,、uh, yeah, here. This is dynamical coordinate from the origin to the center mass position of alpha particle. And this is a, a nucleon position. Uh, so,、okay. yes. So, I omit the variable, but this includes 12, 12、uh, dynamical coordinates. Coming from the 12 nucleons, of course, yes.、Uh, but this capital I, I, not, capital I is not treated as、uh, general coordinates, right? The beta is treated、oh, as. Yeah, generator coordinate is beta, yes. Beta or, yes, beta, in this case, yes. Or kappa, if we have the r a n d o m particle. That's a so, variational parameter, not a dynamical coordinate. Yeah, so, so、uh, is there any. Simple picture for this beta. The picture of beta. Yeah, physical meaning, for example. A physical meaning. Oh, okay, okay. This is,、um, this beta is, yes, put into this one. Beta or capital B here.、Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe this is beta. Capital beta or capital B. In principle, both are the same. And this is corresponding to the size of the trapping potential. This is parabola potential.、Uh -huh. And、uh, yes, the rest wave function of parabola potential is nothing but a Gaussian like this. So this is capital B, capital B. This corresponds to this capital B here. Maybe some additional factor is necessary, but in principle, both are the same. One to one correspondence is given. So beta is a, okay, the beta、uh, gives a, The size of the trapping potential of alpha particles,、mm -hmm. the size of the, we call it container, characterized by the size or deformation, or capital beta vector. Then inside that、uh, container, alpha particles are moving like freely, like a free gas. Yeah. And if we use different betas, and then the con different containers can be prepared for each alpha particle. But for the condensed condensate states, of course, 
all alpha particles should move democratically in the same potential and the same identical orbit should be occupied, then all beta values should be should be taken. Uh, all the same value should be taken for all betas. Uh -huh. hmm. Of course, that is given as a result of the practical calculation, variational calculation. But anyway, is this beta is uh, corresponding to the size of the total nucleus, a trapping potential so, container. Yeah, I got it. So, so the the Jacobi coordinates between alphas are not treated as uh, general coordinates, are they? No, uh, no. Jacobi coordinates is not taken. The Jacobi coordinates you mean uh, for the variational parameter? I mean the general for coordinate. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, as a generator coordinates, we never use a dynamical coordinate. Uh -huh. Just a corrective, uh, just the coordinate of a corrective motion. Okay, okay. And in this but case, in this, yeah, mm -hmm. in this, in terms of the cluster model, we use this variational parameter as a generator coordinate. Mm -hmm. uh, in mean field people, yes, uh, dynamical coordinate is taken as generator coordinate. That corresponds mm -hmm. to this present beta. Or capital P, I not see. a dynamical coordinate. Mm. Yeah, I saw uh, the spin parity, uh, especially the spin of the hypernuclear states, yeah. uh, mm. is still ah, yeah. integer. So yeah, so you did, yeah, did you, it is neglected. You, I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, you neglect. So you don't have a spin spin interaction or something like that. No, 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 no. That's why we always see zero plus zero plus zero plus. So not one half plus. So we neglect the lambda. Uh, spin of lambda particle because oh, uh, we neglect the oh, spin of its potential. Zero particle. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, uh, yes I, I should have said it, explained it. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Thank you. No, thank you, Elsa. Uh, hi. Uh, next time, very nice yes. talk. Uh, Kai, oh, how you. Yeah. Ah, yes. Uh, the TGSR wave function can reproduce the elastic scattering from factor oh, data yes. well at the low yes. momentum. Yeah. Uh, however, it uh, derived from the data at the high uh, yes. uh, Q value. Uh, yeah, what that's right. component is responsible for this in the wave function? <laughs> Maybe it's sometimes it is asked <laughs> with some analysis, but um, I think I calculated this value and the corresponding uh, uh, the distance uh, in coordinate is around uh, one, one centimeter. Yes, around one centimeter. Okay. So this corresponds to uh, less than one centimeter in a dynamical coordinate. That means, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe, uh, in this wave function, of course, or in uh, uh, any uh, models of uh, low energy nuclear physics is based on the nucleon as elementary particle. But uh, yeah, diameter of nucleon is around one fifth meter, maybe uh, some some more uh, high energy, high energy, energetically high structure should be taken into account. Or, uh, maybe that okay. assumption is not correct, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So, thank you. Thank you for your explanation. Yeah. Yeah, you can ask directly. So just unmute yourself and you can ask. Uh -huh. Hello, Rafi Sang. This is Zai Hong. Oh, oh hi. Hey. Nice to see you again. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for introducing this very new uh, and interesting cluster systems. Yes, uh, I, I know, you know, I, I'm familiar with a normal uh, nucleus with the cluster uh -huh. state, but uh, uh, lambda nucleus are quite new to me. So I want to understand uh, in your calculation, for example, in normal THS calculation, you, you, uh, I think you generally use uh, nuclear nuclear interaction. And here ah, yes. you also have the lambda A interaction in addition to the nuclear nuclear interaction, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So then uh, I want to understand, in, if, as you also say, the lambda A interaction is always uh, attractive. 
right? Ah, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, lambda alpha. Uh, lambda alpha. Uh, lambda okay. alpha, yeah. Ah, okay. So, uh, totally, totally yeah. must be attractive, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, they, they is fine. So then I will skip this uh, question. So in experiment, we are always interested in, in this kind of a new cluster mm. states and we, we would like to measure it, for example, but we also want to know what kind of uh, information or let's say a signature or evidence we can use to probe the experiment. Here, in, it seems we can only have the energy levels, something else you can provide. You're talking about carbon-13 lambda or yeah. carbon-12? And uh, just which one? The number. <laughs> number. 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 This is the, this is yeah. you know um what do you think? <laughs> it's very important. It's very difficult, maybe. Uh, uh yeah, second zero, many, many calculations uh given a prediction that this second zero is bound. Some calculations are above the threshold, but but this second zero maybe uh other bound uh, is bound uh, from the lowest threshold this one, but for the other excited state, these are, in a structural sense, this is very interesting, but uh, 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 how to how to create this state experimentally? Uh -huh. Maybe uh, two days later, uh, Tamura-san will give a talk in this same series. <laughs> Maybe uh -huh. uh, you can ask him more, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, 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 okay, so maybe another, uh, maybe, like uh, uh, the crazy question is, if you can have several lambda particles there, can you have a condensate like state with three, let's say, him any five lambda, very similar to Hoyer state? In, if you add two lambda particles, you mean? I mean, you have three lambda particle. Carb that's carbon. Three particle. lambda. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I think so. Because yes. okay, right. okay. okay. If, for example, helium-5 is not bound, you know, of course. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. helium-5 lambda can be is bound yeah. by 3 MeV. So yeah. why not we can consider, <laughs> why not we can consider 3 helium-5 lambda? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I no, just the Promising, imagination. I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I also imagine that. <laughs> this is, okay. yes. Thank you. Pretty nice uh, imagination, I think. So, okay, any questions? Yeah, you can just uh, mute and you can ask directly, I think. Okay, so if no, uh, Thank you very much, Vanessa, and ah, also thank you. Thank you very much. For attention. So, uh, now let's see you next time. Okay. Yeah. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye.